Well, it's that time of the year again where we get another major Windows 10 update. Well, technically twice a year. Regardless, this is the Windows May update, and we've got quite a few significant major changes here and new features, and some other minor ones that are worth mentioning as well. So we're just gonna go over what I think are the best ones, not every single little change, but it still should be pretty interesting. Of course, as is usual with these big major updates, probably best to not install them right away because Microsoft sometimes has trouble getting a lot of the bugs out but I do not believe this will be forced upon you yet. If you want to install it, it is available through Microsoft's website. You can manually download it, but it probably is gonna be a few more days at least before Microsoft, I think, will automatically have it downloaded to Windows, so you don't have to worry about it yet. As usual, before we jump in, I wanna quickly plug the best Instagram account in existence, which just happens to be mine, purely coincidence. So if you wanna check it out, it's just at Theo Joe. I post amazing stuff on there. It's like one of the wonders of the world, I swear. So again, at Theo Joe over on Instagram. So let's jump into this. The first big feature is gonna be Windows light theme. So before we got the dark theme, now we have both the dark theme and the light theme. And if you wanna change it to this, you can go to settings, personalization, colors, and then under choose your color, you'll have a little drop down where you can pick it. I believe that the light theme might be the new default for Windows 10 Home new installations, but I'm not sure, but if you wanna get it now, you can just go to that setting. Another change, which isn't really a feature, but you will maybe notice it, is that Windows 10 will now have a block of reserved storage, which will be about seven gigabytes or so, and this will be for things like updates, and temporary files, that sort of thing, so that if Windows does need to download an update, it will always have space to do so. I guess there were a lot of people who had so little hard drive space that it couldn't even download important updates, so now you basically have to have that free space. This day and age, seven gigabytes is not really a big deal, so I don't think it's gonna hurt anyone, but just be aware of. Now this next feature is definitely a big one, and it is the Windows Sandbox. This is a brand new feature, and you can access it by going to the Start menu and then searching for Turn Windows Features On and Off, and then go down to Windows Sandbox, check it, and then you'll probably have to restart to actually enable it. But then you can just run it like any other app, and it'll open up a Windows Sandbox, which is basically like an isolated version of Windows. It's like a virtual machine. Well, it is a virtual machine. So anything you do in that will be completely temporary. It will not affect the outside main system. So you can do things like testing software, or testing to see if a program is a virus when you've run it. So for example, if you were to go and download some software and install it, as soon as you close out of the sandbox, it's completely gone. Everything you did on that virtual machine is gone, and when you rerun it, it will be completely blank again. So definitely don't do anything on there that you want to actually save. So this would pretty much only be useful in testing situations. Now, I don't believe at the moment you can transfer files from your main computer into the sandbox. You kind of have to download everything through the system sandbox itself. So just be aware of that, but still really cool feature. It'll probably come in handy for a lot of people. One big thing to mention though, is that this is only gonna be available as a feature in pro, enterprise, and education versions of Windows. If you have Windows 10 Home, you can't use it, but there are free programs out there that I've mentioned before, like Sandboxy is an option if you do have Home. Here's a really notable one that I think everyone's gonna be happy about, and that is that everyone can now delay Windows updates by seven days, including home users. So basically the Windows update window is now gonna have like a new little interface with some new options, and you can literally just click pause for seven days. This might come in handy if you're gonna be going on vacation or something like that where you don't want any big new Windows updates coming along and ruining everything while you're away from home and having to download giant files over crappy Wi-Fi, something like that. You can prevent it until you're in a better situation to actually install the update. Judging by how the feature looks, it seems like it pauses both security and feature updates. I kind of wish there was a way to just pause feature updates, not security updates, because of course you always want security updates as soon as you can, but I guess it's better feature than nothing. Of course, do remember that if you have pro enterprise or education, you can pretty much delay Windows updates either security or features or both by pretty much as long as you want. So this is really just a big new feature for home users. All right, up next we have one that I, again, I think a lot of people are gonna like, and that is that Cortana and the search function are completely separate now. 
So if you go into the search box and you're searching for a file, it will no longer bring up suggestions from Cortana or any nonsense like that. It'll just do a file search so you won't have any other BS to look at. Another important new feature with search is that you can now make it so Windows will actually search all the files on your computer. Before it would only search like in libraries and stuff. So if you search for a file that wasn't in one of those folders, then it would not see that at all. So to enable this, which I think you should, you go to settings and then search and then searching windows and you can select enhanced here and I would recommend it this way if you search for something, it's gonna search your actual whole computer, which I don't know why it didn't do that by default. Here's a cool feature that some people might find useful. You can now customize the cursor in Windows a lot more. So you can do this by going to the settings and then ease of access and then cursor and pointer. And you can do things like changing the colors. So you can do either black and white, uh, inverse, so if you hover over something that's black, the cursor will be white, that sort of thing. Or you can choose whatever color you want. You can also change the size of the cursor, so you can make it really huge for whatever reason if you want. So a lot of stuff here that might be helpful in some situations. Next up, we got a few little minor features. And the first is that in the taskbar, there'll now be a Windows update icon to let you know if there's like pending updates to install or download or whatever, you'll see that now. Next, in the task manager, you can now choose a default tab to come up when you launch the task manager. So if you know you're always gonna be going to the detailed processes tab, you can just have that open by default if you want. Next, Windows added some features to the emoji panel. So if you didn't know this already, you can press the Windows key and then the semicolon when you're typing something, it'll bring up the ability to insert an emoji. And now they've added some text emojis that you can click on and symbols. So before it was just emojis, now you have a few other options for some other types of things you might wanna pop into text. One new feature having to do with the game bar is that there'll be at the end of the, a session of gaming, when you close a full screen game, it'll bring up a type of gallery thing. So it'll show you, for example, any screenshots you took while in that game. So you can kind of review them. So that's kind of nice. A lot of other game recorder softwares already do that. So it's kind of bringing it in line with those. And this isn't really a feature, but it's something you might notice. And that is that when you go to the settings menu, now it might show some personalization at the top. Now, I don't know if this happens in every version of Windows or if it's only gonna work if you have a Microsoft account. I'm using Windows 10 Pro and I don't get this little customization bar. So that might be different for you. I'm not sure if it does show up, then that is the new feature. All right, finally, we can go over several smaller changes, but they're still worth mentioning, I think. So first up, you can now more easily sync the time with Microsoft servers in the settings. So you can just right click on the clock and then date and time settings and sync it right there. Before you had to go into the control panel and sift through all the old interfaces and really dig through to be able to sync it. It's so much easier now if your clock is wrong. Next, apparently Microsoft added some optimizations to the old patch that was applied last year for the Spectre vulnerabilities. So now Windows potentially might run a little bit faster, but you might not notice it, but it is a change. On new Windows installations, you might notice that the default start menu is now less cluttered. They have only like one column of things before it was filled to the brim with a bunch of crap. Now it's a little bit cleaner. So if you are installing Windows new, you'll have a lot less stuff to remove from it. You also now have the ability to uninstall more default included programs with Windows. So I'll put a list right here. I'm not gonna go through every one. So if you ever wanted to install or uninstall rather any of these programs, you now can. Next up, Microsoft added some tweaks and new features to Notepad. So if for example, you open up certain text formats, it'll look correct, whereas before it might not have. Also, it'll show an asterisk at the top menu bar if you have an unsaved file with changes. And also, I believe if you close out of Notepad or you shut down the computer, when Notepad is open, it'll now reopen with that text still in there, you won't lose it. Another little change in the settings menu, you can now go into ethernet settings and actually change some of these IP config settings before you had to go into the old control panel and go into the settings there and dig through it. Now you have a more accessible option to change like the DNS, that sort of thing. Another cool little feature for privacy is if any app in Windows is using your microphone, you'll now see a little microphone icon in the taskbar. So if you are seeing that and you don't have anything open that you think is using the microphone, well, something is. 
things. So just be aware of that. Finally, another cool one that's pretty minor, but I think it's gonna have big implications is that when you open a new Windows Explorer window, it'll now open as its own process by default. So this means that every new window is gonna have its own process. So if something crashes, it's not gonna close out all of your Explorer windows and like restart the taskbar and the windows start menu and all that sort of thing like it usually does. Theoretically, it should now only close out that one window and then you can just reopen it and should be nice. Those are just what I think are the most significant ones. If I missed any that you think are important, you can let us know down in the comments and we can read about them down there. If you wanna check out some other videos, I'll put those right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. So as usual, thanks so much for watching guys and see you next time. Have a good one.